Hey there everybody, Aaron here. Welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Today, we're gonna to be doing an overview and field test on the biggest, heaviest knife the Ontario Knife Company makes, the Ontario SP-53. This thing is a monster. We had great success with the Ontario SP-51 with its saber grind and 20 ounces. So I wanna get my hands on the biggest of the Spec Plus line that Ontario makes with its 22 ounces and saber grind, the SP-53. And I really wanted to see if this was icing on the cake when it comes to Ontario's large survival knives. So we're going to go ahead and give you guys a couple basic specs and then we're going to thrash on this thing, chop, baton, carve, I mean do everything and uh, we're going to see if this thing might just be the best SP model that you could buy for hard chopping and hard batoning. So let's go ahead and look at the specs and we'll begin to use this blade. All right, let's go ahead and look at the specs here on the SP-53. What you have is a total length from tip to the back of the handle of 15 inches with from the guard to the tip of 10 inches and then the actual cutting edge of nine and a half inches. So you're getting a lot of blade space there, not only to connect with the wood, but also to span really large logs for batoning. You have the saber grind, the SP-52 would have the full flat grind. And like we saw with the SP-51 versus SP-50, the, the saber grind or the flat grind that you see here on the SP-53 and that the SP-51 has definitely batons and chops better than the full flat grinds on the SP-50 and on the 52 in my opinion. So that's why we went with the Sabre Grind on the SP-53. Got a really good relief edge on this particular knife. A lot better than on the SP-51 that we reviewed. So it's a little more aggressive, a little bit sharper right out of the box uh, for possibly some better rope cutting and carving tasks. So we're gonna see as we go through the review. You already see we've already put a lot of work on there uh, <clears throat> on the blade and that coating's already starting to come off a little bit. You know, it's a spray on coating, just like you're gonna get on K-Bar, you know, a lot of those other knives, the wrap models that come from Ontario. So it's gonna wear on you. It is 5160 high carbon steel Rockwell hardness, 53 to 55. They bring that Rockwell down so that it's super tough. I mean, this thing is indestructible almost with how tough it is and they do a great heat treatment on it so that it holds a good edge. I've never had any chipping out with any of my SP models and we've reviewed several here on the channel and no real chipping or dulling either. I mean, it takes forever for these things to dull with how tough they are with that low rock well and then a good heat treat that Ontario does over there. So uh, that's awesome. Craton handle, full tang construction, weighs in at 22 ounces. Super heavy, monster of a blade, 22 ounces. And then you're looking at right here, eight ounces with the sheath. So you're looking at 30 ounces total carry weight. And then it is 0.26 or just over a quarter inch thick slab of 5160 high carbon steel. That thing is just a monster. So let's go ahead, begin to baton, chop, carve, whittle, slash and destroy the woods with the SP-53. Oh my God. Look at that SP-53. Look at that, swung through, boom. Made short work of this huge pine tree right here. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. Guys, I gotta tell you, there's literally not a single other knife that I have chopped with to date like the SP-53. This thing, with that huge amount of belly and it's 22 ounces, is just destroying all the wood that we've thrown at it today. Oh my gosh. Very comfortable in my hand as well with that Craton handle, that nice hook back there, good lanyard. I got a really good grip on it. I don't have to reset too often. The handles on a BK9 or uh, other Becker products are still better you know, for uh, chopping, just the ergonomics of how they're designed. They don't fly out of your hand as much, but this is uh, a good second, a good runner up on the handle construction. But when it comes to chopping, literally not another knife on the channel that we have reviewed to date will chop like this knife. There we go. Split that sucker.
nice. You can see here, I'm getting some really good shavings right there with the SP53. It's because the relief edge is a little more aggressive than what we had on our SP50 and the 51 that we reviewed previously here on the channel. This one just has a sharper grind angle, so you are able to actually do some feathering and carving uh, way better than those other knives. And that's kind of hit or miss. That's the way I'm finding with Ontario. Sometimes their grind angles are fantastic. Sometimes they're a little off because to my knowledge, uh, last time I talked with them, they do all of it by hand. They don't have a machine that grinds it in at a perfect angle. They just kind of eyeball it. Uh, and that can kind of suck sometimes for us out there, uh, you know, that we, if we have to reprofile an edge. This one doesn't need to be reprofiled. Yours might and to get it to be able to do this shaving, but I'm very impressed. That's the same as uh, my, almost is the same as my BK9. My BK9 still has a better, you know, grind angle and will do even better, you know, shaving like that. But this is very close. And I love the fact that they give you a really nice finger choil right there. I can get my finger in there nice and flat, no thumb ramps to worry about like you would on a BK9 or a BK7 or something like that or some of those other knives out there and then I can really go to town and get a good kind of fluff stick going there for my fire if I had to I could use this SP53 and it could absolutely get that job done for my fire so that's a plus and a little bit better grind angle than what we had on the SP50 and 51. See that right there, boom, through hard pine. You know, the SP53 with that quarter inch thick blade and then this saber grind will baton just as well as your SP51 in my opinion. It's gonna do a great job for you. And it's gonna be able to span a lot, you know, with its nine and a half inch actual cutting edge. I mean, it's literally just slamming a, sl uh, you know, a wedge right through that piece of wood making it very very easy to get through that look at that awesome this has got all kinds of twists you see the grain of the wood is twisting knots that 5160 is super tough look at that so awesome Again, another split with your SP53. All right, here's the SP53 sheath. Very similar to all of Ontario's large, you know, sheaths. Good quality nylon, molly along the back. Large opening there for your tactical belts. Really nice pocket in the front, adjustable straps so you can get the retention on the blade that you want. And then snap it back into place and can also carry a lot of other larger, you know, blades that look and are in the similar shape as the SP-53. All right, everybody, so you've seen the SP-53 in action, and like I've kind of said throughout the video, they're literally, out of all the knives that we've reviewed here, BK-9, the SE Hungalus, the Artac, the SP-51, none of them chop like this one. This will baton just about as well as your SP-51, as well as your SP-51. I mean, exactly the same, because it's going to have the saber grind, because it's the quarter inch thick, uh, and then the nine inch, nine and a half inches of spanning width that you can span huge logs and just split like crazy. So, if you don't mind the recurve, because you are going to have to spend a little bit more time sharpening uh, when it co does come to resharpening this blade, then you would on a natural, you know, just straight up like SP-51 or SP-50. Because of the recurve, you will have to spend a little bit more time resharpening. But aside from that, I would take this. This is the icing on the cake. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is uh, the best chopper to date of large wilderness knives that we've reviewed here on the channel uh, and it is designed so well and at right around between 80 and 90 bucks just depending on where you buy it it is totally worth a purchase if you're going to be doing batoning and chopping with your large wilderness blade I would highly highly recommend this is going to go in the hall of fame uh, this wilderness Warhammer is what I would title this thing is totally worth a purchase so thanks so much for watching everybody stay equipped stay prepared we'll see you out there